The Wednesday Week is sponsored by Bentoria.com. That's B E N T O R I A.com. <laughs> gentlemen and a very warm welcome to the wednesday week the sheffield wednesday podcast i'm lord hillsborough and with me on the line first of all we've got james hello there james your boy hello 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 um everyone had a good christmas uh, yeah, absolutely have you suitably recovered from your exploits all being i have no idea what's happened probably over the last <laughs> week it's a blur <laughs> so yeah standard standard christmas <laughs> and uh, victoria how are you my darling I'm all right, thanks, my lord. I spent last night with James and Fudge. Ooh. Oh, dick. <laughs> oh. To be fair, we, we had a day session. We did. <laughs> I'm oh. not even going to ask. Um, Fudgy, how the devil are you all been? I'm uh, I'm all right. I'm uh, I, I did we did uh, spend the uh, spend the evening with uh, with Vic and James last night, and um, yeah, it was a veritable fudge sandwich. <laughs> 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 Kids <laughs> got a little settee. Actually, that's all I meant by that. <laughs> Just the image alone. And we have a rather <laughs> special guest this evening, ladies and gents. Uh, we have uh, Terry Hibbard of uh, Owls Online fame. How the devil are you all been? I'm not through your bad lord, H. How are you? I'm ah, very well. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on again, my old. Hold no, on a minute. Do Owls Online hate us? No. Ooh, we, just no. Not at all. Isn't it so, them that hates us? No. Nobody some, hates some of the posters think it's an acquired taste. <laughs> Others... <laughs> Say nothing. No, we, we, <laughs> we don't do politics on the Wednesday week. Um, right then, ladies and gentlemen, so let's crack straight on. We've got quite a bit to get through, um, mainly the matches. Uh, very little Wednesday news, but uh, I mean, the week started off uh, quite marvellously, really, with the uh, the visit of Birmingham um, to Hillsborough, and um, it, it, it all went rather swimmingly, didn't it? It seems like ages ago, doesn't it, that game? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 it took me a while to realise whether we were playing Watford or Birmingham, given what they were wearing. It I mean, was what, rather what chopping off, they got? wasn't it? It was, it was, it was wrong, wasn't it? But yes, I, uh, it, as far as that game goes, I sat in the uh, much maligned grandstand, and the uh, the maligning is, uh, well, it's deserved to be honest. There's absolutely <laughs> no atmosphere, and uh, there's literally two urinals for the entire stand. So, when um, you say literally, three, four beers in. Do you mean literally, literally, or literally? There's, there's literally one toilet there. You know what I mean? So you've got, it's all at one end, and then to get a pie is just an absolute <laughs> adventure in itself. And then, um, then my little nephew wanted to go and meet, um, go meet Ozzy Owl, and we couldn't get down, they wouldn't let us out. So you're literally trapped on this mezzanine concrete shelf. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> with, with just no atmosphere. I mean, you can hear the away fans at one side, you can just hear the home fans on the other, and you sat there just going, oh. <sighs> Anyway, uh, back to the football. Back to the football. Um, I think that Birmingham kind of was an apology. They didn't actually turn up. I mean, they clearly had too much Christmas pudding before we uh, before they kicked off, and um, it was they, you know it was quite actually embarrassing. I mean, we we made them look amateurish, and I don't think Barry Banan um, broke a sweat at any point. He literally just jogged around, pinged a few absolute peaches. Not that I'm saying he played badly. He just didn't break a sweat, and he didn't need to. Um, uh, Cheeky Nando had, had had an awesome game as as, as we saw, but, um, but yeah, I think yes, we were good, but Birmingham were awful. And if I was uh, if if I'd made that journey on Boxing Day on a day where I could be with my family, I'd be a little annoyed. I'd be bare vexed, fam. It has to say, our first goal was a, a little bit of a scrappy affair, wasn't it? It's not exactly what you call the beach. There is a sort of shout for um, a handball in there as well, although um, I think it was more ball to hand personally. And I mean, up until that point, we, we'd had us chances, but uh, yeah, again, it all came after the goal, really, didn't it? It was like we were giving them a chance. It was like we weren't trying and not having to do much and still look better than them. After the first goal, I think they might as well have just packed up and gone home. Um, you know, took the sideways Germany flag kit and and disappeared. <laughs> they, were, they were awful, weren't they? And just to think that we we've, we've been chasing them for the last few weeks to get into you know touch top six, they were shocking. 
I think it's a case of they were on the way down as we're on the way up. Uh, Jamie's made a cracking point uh, last week uh, about uh, they're a cracking start to the season, but they've not been fantastical since. And, of course, we saw that. The uh, the second goal, again, was a bit of a gift, a bit of a, um, a slapstick-type moment, kicking the ball against his own defender and it running to, uh, to Gisley, which, to be fair, he still had quite a bit to do to, to slot that past the keeper, which he did very, very well, I thought. And, of course, then, um, it's just a, a, an outstanding, outstanding run and shot from Fessy. That goal was absolutely phenomenal. He started in his own half. It was, um, you know, it sort of reminded me of, you remember the David Hurst goal against, was it Hull? Many, oh, many, many years Man ago, City. yeah? Oh, where yeah. he took it, yeah, he did a couple of times, didn't he, Hursty? Um, <clears throat> it was brilliant. Um, what, what kind of struck me about the Birmingham game is that we, I mean, we were in complete control pretty much from the first minute. And it was actually probably on the last 15 minutes where Birmingham looked even slightly dangerous. But we didn't particularly need to get out of first gear to win that game. It was it was a fairly straightforward, um, fairly, I don't want to say easy win, because I don't think there's ever an easy win in, in football. But, you know, we didn't have to do a lot to, to win quite convincingly. Um, and I think... This is kind of like a, a point by Sheffield Wednesday have really changed this season. Um, I think in, in years gone by, we would play well in games. We wouldn't score. We'd struggle to score. Uh, we'd get loads of chances. We couldn't put them away. You know, now we're winning games quite convincingly without having to put in fantastic performances. And we're not, I'm not talking about teams at the bottom of the table here. You know, Birmingham are up there or thereabouts with us. Uh, and we're beating them quite easily at home. And I think that's a really good sign of, of just how far we've come um, even just you know the the, the last few weeks of, of this season that we can do that. It's just nice that his home form so good again because so many people last season, you know, it's obviously the majority go to home games. We all know how bad it was last season at times. Obviously the pitch didn't help. The players we had, while we've still got quite a few of them, we didn't have the ones that can make the difference when it matters, like Forestieri, who is just something else. Um, it's just nice to go and enjoy football again. You know, I'm lucky enough to have been in 93 when we had Waddle and Hurst and everybody, else, everybody like that. It feels like that again. It's great. No, absolutely. It's certainly starting to uh, sort of get that way again. I mean, the Fessy is certainly one of the players that uh, um, the, the, the 10 and 11 year olds are going to speak about, like, just like we um, spoke about Waddle and Hurst, etc. etc. Um, of course. Uh... He's unbelievable, isn't he? He's absolutely unbelievable. I oh, mean, you certainly. only had to watch him on that game and then on obviously last night's game, and he's just ridiculous. He's so good, it's scary. Because if we lose Is there him... a danger of us becoming a one-man team, do you think? Because my concern is, like like I said, without trying to move on to Middlesbrough too quickly, we um, we had a bit of a dour game. We didn't have that creative edge. And I know that, you know, Banan's got some... Uh, Banan. I've actually started saying that now, <laughs> like it's his name. I kept correcting you last night. Every time you said Banan, I was like, Banan! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounded like the opening to the Muppets. Barry Banan. And we... We had that, you know, we were lacking that spark last night. And when when Cheeky Nando came on, it became all of a sudden a a different game. And we absolutely dominated that second half. Now, is like like I said, I'll ask you guys, is there a danger of us becoming a one-man team? When, when Fessy is your one-man, I'm quite happy to take that, to be honest. I think yeah. I'd rather have him as our one-man than Steve McLean. In this league, I think you're quite lucky to have... Um, uh, 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 someone like Fessy in your team because he's he's good enough to play in the Premier League. Um, so it's sort of inevitable that you're going to feel a little bit like a one-man team when that player's not there, that you're not the same. But you'd be to be a championship club and have more than one player of the quality of Forestieri, you'd be really, really fortunate. There aren't that many players out there in this in this league who, who are available to buy to be able to have one that you can hold in reserve to bring in when, when Forestieri is a little bit tired. Can I just throw out there that if we were in the Premier League next week, next year, whatever, Fessy and Hillan would be our best players. Just throwing it out there, just saying. It's not great in this league, but in the Premier League, Hillan would bust it. That sounds like a big throw to me. It's a a pretty big throw. Have you been drinking? Have you been drinking? No, no. You were sourced up on Saturday when I saw you. You were sourced up last night. (laughs) What's in it? Is it Irish? 
<laughs> Irish tea. Oh, it's okay. I've just got a cup of tea. It's whole milk. It's not the All right, so I'll go on then. That, no. uh, you, you can't just throw it out there. You must back it Fessy up. Fessy and Halan next season. Why, why Halan? I, well, I, I, can, I can see with Fessy, why Halan? Do you know what? I don't know. It's a bit like a bit of a young <laughs> Thing. It's, a bit, it's, a bit, it's just a bit too skillful. <laughs> no, sure. Not so it's essentially. <laughs> it's yeah. a bit too skillful for our level. I, I genuinely, I could see him doing well. I'm, I'm just in. I'm, I'm astounded. <laughs> essentially, your big defence on that was a was a you know a, a Les Dennis impression of Mavis from Coronation Street. <laughs> I don't really know. Is what you said. However, I do yeah. understand what you mean that you get you do get more time on the ball. In the Premier League, you do. I do. I think he's and, doing uh, a lot better in the. I think he's too good And you think when, when he's level. got the ball, he might he might be able to do something a bit better with it. Is what you mean? Yeah. You wait and see, and then when you all want him on your shirts, and I'll laugh at you. I'll say, huh. remember that <laughs> podcast, and I said he was good, and you all laughed I, in my face. I, th- I think I'll take that risk. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't <laughs> say Vix, absolutely. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm a bit of a uh, Helen fan. I, I I his pace is phenomenal. He he he. he he can't argue with his pedigree, where he came from, and uh, at the moment he just seems to be our player that comes on when we're playing a, a counter-attacking style. Again, we'll come on to middle in a moment or two. Um, of course, other sort of positives from the game. I thought Joe Wildsmith had a cracking game, pulled off a, um, two decent saves. Uh, well, one cracker and one uh, what was uh, looks like it was going to hit the bar anyway on there. Um, but uh, certainly, um, uh, again, we, we're running out of superlatives for him. But I think he's going to be such a good keeper, it really. Is. And, I honestly do believe, I don't know if you guys think the same, um, this time next year, I think he's going to be pushing Westwood for that uh, for that uh, number one shirt, you know. To be honest, I think he already possibly is. Um, it's another clean sheet as well. You've only got to read anything or hear anything that any of the players have to say about him. You know, they all say the only thing that's stopping him is himself. You know, he can go as far as he wants to mm. go. They, you know, he's getting accolades left, right and centre and fair play, I mean... You know, you go in the ground and, and Westwood's name's not on the team sheet. And if you just stand around and listen to people, not in a stoker style, obviously, but you stand around and listen to people talking and there's nobody worried about him being in the net. You know, you'd throw a 19, 20-year-old in the goal, mm. I don't know, two or three years ago and instantly people go, oh, well, he'll just be off on loan and he's, he's only here for, a, you know, this game just because he's got to play. Now he's, he's proven he's been I'll, good, I'll agree good with enough. You, I, I agree with you. I don't... Um... I think panic is a strong word, but when Richard O'Donnell dropped into the side, I, there, there was a slight concern ab- about his age and his um, and his experience <laughs> that might might cause him an issue. But I don't I don't have that with 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 Joe. I feel that um, I feel like he, he's a hell of a capable keeper already at such a young age. Yeah, but look, speaking of O'Donnell, though, when he came into the side, we were we were a different team, and di- I know it's oceans apart from what we've been for years, but. We were a different team in a different position, fighting for different places. And arguably, the pressure was higher on O'Donnell because back then the defence weren't as good or the strikers couldn't get us out of trouble if we got into trouble. Like we seem to, you know, we like to let the other teams have a go before we do at the minute with that good. Um, But back then, somebody like O'Donnell concedes, the crowd start to get on the players back, not necessarily him. The pressure is 10 times worse than what it is now. Now we've got better players in front of him, and that's no disrespect to the lads before. I just think because the team is better, you know, the comp- Wildsmith must have more confidence in the players in front of him than maybe O'Donnell would have had back mm. then. Can I, can I raise another player who's um, been causing a bit of debate? So we've, we've talked about before, uh, but that is Gary Hooper. Because um, I think there's still a few people that aren't really won over by, um, by Hooper and his performances um, I can, can i give you some stats you know you, you know i like a good stat I know um, you do. and this is um a, a, i've got a friend called steve who runs a, a facebook fans forum and this is a really interesting thing that he posted the other day which was the the number of goals that we score without hooper on the pitch compared to the number of goals that we score with hooper on the pitch so this takes into account the huddersfield game the blackburn game derby cardiff mk dons uh, Wolves and Birmingham. Um, so there were 294 minutes where he wasn't on the pitch in between those games and we scored one goal. Uh, and there were 336 minutes where he was on the pitch and we scored 14 goals. 
So that's an average of, of one goal every 294 minutes without Hooper on the pitch and one goal every 24 minutes with Hooper on the pitch. Oh. I, and, and, you know, I'm not, he's not scoring those goals, all of them. He's scoring some of them. But I think that what you get with Hooper is you get that maturity. He's got a football brain. He moves around. He pulls defenders away. And he allows people like Forestieri and other players to go on and score goals. I don't, you can't argue with those stats. That's, that's, you know, that's, that's a huge marked difference between the number of goals that we score with Hooper on the pitch than when he's not on the pitch. I went to... With James, didn't we? We went down to Gary Hooper's debut for us and um, yeah. went down to Charlton. And it was a, um, and we thought, this is going to be banging because Charlton are, yeah. are just rubbish. You know what I mean? We'll absolutely smash them out the park. Now, we spoke about the Charlton game, obviously, on, on the show after. And I think we made it difficult for ourselves. I don't think Charlton were a particularly good side and their route one bosh kind of Sunday league football, we just didn't cope with at all. And, um, but Gary Hooper, for me, was, was poor. And and I think a lot of fans down there that day shared that um, shared shared that opinion. Yeah. Over from what I've seen of him over the last few weeks, now there was the ensuing three weeks after, um, and we sit, we struggled to string together a win with Hooper on the pitch. Yeah, we might have scored the goals that James's maths has just pointed out, but we weren't winning. And so Gary Hooper's arrival coincided with us not getting the points on the table. But then um, after. After watching him these last two games, his build-up play and his movement that drags defenders out of the way that you can see when you when you're there and you can see when you're watching the game is 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 absolutely phenomenal. He's a very clever striker and his touches is, is smashing for, for to, sound, to sound like Alan Partridge. <laughs> but uh, he's um he's really a uh, he's really a better player than than what we saw down on a uh, on a cold cold London afternoon. I think the only problem is that people expected him to come in and bang in loads of goals, because his record, his previous record, is pretty impressive. But he's, he just, to me, he doesn't look like that sort of player. You know, many people have said we need this twenty goal a season striker, and Fernando's doing his bit to get there and being halfway there now. Um, but again, he wasn't the striker that we thought. You know, I, I didn't think he'd score ten in the games he has so far. Um, so I think many people expected Hooper to come in. And and be that, you know, the one with his name on the score sheet every week. And when that didn't happen, I think he just became a bit of a scapegoat for some. Well, the, the what what James has described there, the the, the dragging players about, the, the clever football, and, and, and I know people are going to get on a bit about this. I absolutely know that they are. But that's exactly what we've been screaming, well, I personally have been screaming, that Atty's been doing for such a long time that nobody notices. Not at all. If you look at Fessy's goal, uh, the, 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 the screamer that he scored, the, the three defenders that are following Fessy are watching Atty. And Atty moves them to the, the far side of the box, so which opens up the space for Fessy to hit the shot. And why on earth people don't see that from Atty, but can see it from Hooper, is beyond me. Just as Kieran Lee were about to hit the ball... Arty barges into one of their centre arse with any look at... Mo- I hope it was Michael Morrison. Um, <laughs> he barged into their player, but thankfully the ball went in the net. But if, he had, if it had come back out, he'd got five yards of space. And, you know, you mentioned that people don't spot what he does. I know the ball didn't come to him, but if it had, it had all come from that, you know, sly... Is it a foul? I don't know. But, mm. you know, I think it would have been really clever if, if the ball had come back to him and he did put it in the net. But... Again, would people have praised him for that? Or have people noticed that? I think that's true. I, th- I think that's a fair point. Um, I think that, yeah, th- there is. And I, I give Atty some some stick. And it's, you know, it's kind of tongue-in-cheek and kind of in jest because, um, you know, I do think he's got a, a role I, to play. I, I think you're, the actual words you used last week, oh boy, well, I've written him off. <laughs> no, that's not true. It was the week before that I've written him off. He it, it was, it was back in favour with me last week. Is he back on um, the list? Yeah, he's, he's fine now. He's all right. He can, he can, he can stay for a bit longer. Um, no, you're right. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, th- probably the difference is with Atty is that because he's a big guy, so you expect him to kind of be winning everything in the box and scoring lots of goals from set pieces and stuff. And that's not kind of the strength to his game that you'd expect it to be with him. Um, I, I suppose with, you know, with Hooper, you don't look at him. He doesn't look particularly kind of, you know, he's not a, you know, a really kind of slim build kind of player that you expect to be running about all over the place and, and finding lots of, of, of space. So, you know, he also does something that, that you wouldn't expect from someone of his physique, I guess. Um, That's very you right, diplomatic you know, they're, they're both, of you, James. That was, uh... both, he's a bit chubby, isn't he? Let's be fair. He's a little bit chubby. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, they both they both play that that role pretty well and and pull players off in different directions, which allows. Um, you know, someone else to go on and score the goals. Hooper's been getting as much stick as Atty because everyone knows how much money Gary Hooper's on. You know, it's not his fault how much money he gets paid, is it? If, if someone offers you this amount of money and you go, oh, actually, no, I'll just take half of that if that's all right. You know, he gets paid what he gets paid, but he's been getting quite a bit of stick for, you know, people calling him lazy and things like that. And I, I really do feel it's unfair. No, I absolutely understand it, and I mean, although I'm not the, the biggest Hooper fan at the moment, I, I I can see that there's an improvement there, absolutely. And don't get me wrong, I hope he comes good. I'd love him to, but we shall see. Um, right, so let's crack on then, shall we? Of course, after all the praise and the wonderfulness and the marvelousness and just destroying Birmingham, came the Middlesbrough game. Um, it, we again, uh, as our um, remit permits, shall we say, we do have to report everything um, uh, that we possibly can about this. And um, the, the first thing has to be mentioned is the the two days that we had to uh, prepare for the game, and the nine days that Middlesbrough had to prepare for the game um, due to their Blackburn fixture being called off. Um, Carlos has had words about this um i think the press have blown it up a, a little bit more than probably carlos has done himself um it, it is what it is isn't it uh, it's english football um this is how it happens sometimes yeah it's always happened and it always will you're going to get that you get games that, that that get called off you know it, it it feels more unfair at this time of year because of the fact that you play in two games in three days um, so a team that's not playing two games in three days, it feels like they've got you know an advantage. So it, it is what it is, you know. Next season, something like that might go in our favour. Um, I, I, I don't, you know, Carlos saying the game should have been postponed is 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 a bit daft, really, because you've got fans who've booked the transport and everything to get there. It's obviously you can't you can't call it off because something like that. He's obviously looking at the welfare of his players, isn't he? I mean, we've, you know, we've had a defensive injury list virtually as long as my arm for a month, um, you know, centre half wise anyway. Um, and I think he's just looking after the other players. Like um, Forest Area, you know, he admitted later that he were only fit enough, or they agreed that he'd play 45 minutes. Um, was Hutchinson really fit? Because he took a whack against Birmingham and went off early. Mm. You know, I, I I think he's just looking, you know, he's, he's concerned about his players more than anything. Yeah, it is a bit unfortunate, but let's be honest about it. Would it would Middlesbrough have really kicked off like they had, like Carlos did? And I don't want to sound harsh on him. I like the guy. I think he's doing a great job. Um, but I just think mm, sometimes you just need to leave it and get on with it. No, oh, absolutely. And of course, uh, Carlos's um, team selection um, did essentially it was ruled by that, that those particular choices on there, wasn't it? Um, to me, it seems as though we are set up to, to lock things up, uh, playing semi, um, obviously in the uh, the middle of the park as well. Um, two incredibly quick um, wingers with uh, Helen and Sugu on each side. To me, that just screams counter-attacking, absolutely screams counter-attacking. Um, a lot of people on Twitter, with, uh, and I'm sure on Facebook as well, were besmirching Carlos's first 11 selection saying we should have played the same side this that and the other personally I think that's nonsense absolute nonsense if Fessy had started the game played 90 minutes um, and got injured due to fatigue or anything at all like that quite simply our season would have been well and truly chuffed on there wouldn't it so to, to, to want to play the same team with the injury list that we've had I just think is nonsense absolute nonsense Totally agree. Yeah, I, I, I just uh, you can't you can't do it. You know, he he knows those players. He knows what their um, kind of fitness level is 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 like going into that Middlesbrough game, and he knows who's who's going to be fit enough and capable of managing ninety minutes. And he's he's got to be looking ahead to the Fulham game next week, who are a team that concede goals for fun, um, and thinking, you know, that that's a, that's a place that we can go there and win. Um, and I, I, I don't think he'd actually come out and say that he's necessarily prioritising the Fulham game over the Middlesbrough game, um, but I, you know, it kind of feels a little bit like that's what 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 he's doing and kind of looking at it, thinking, uh, I need to have my strongest eleven available to 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 play at Fulham, um, and yeah, you know, we've made a big deal about the fact that we've got a big squad and we've got quality and depth, and there's no point having a big squad and having that quality and depth if you play the same team every single week. You know, you, you have a big squad so that you can change it around when you need to, and last night we needed to. I think it's a good point that because 
you know, look at Tom Lees. He played every game up to the game where he got injured. Every single minute of every game. And he's injured and we've missed him. We do miss him, without a doubt. You know, if we'd have done the same with Coris Dieri, Wallace um, and anybody else, and they get injured, then, you know, we, we're stuck. We're completely stuck. So, I, you know, it's, I think it's player management and it's just unfortunate that it was in front of the television cameras and the goal came so early in the game. Um, and then that, you know, 44 seconds or whatever it were, people got on the high horse for a while. And then it's just the fact that when Forestieri come on for the second half and, and you know, we, we had that more attacking out, you know, outlook for all the second half. I don't know. It just, it, I think it's just fueled some, some people's fires from the, what happened in the first five minutes. No, absolutely. I mean, it, it was, let's be quite blunt about it, absolutely awful defending for the first goal, wasn't it? Um, I don't think there's one particular player to blame. Um, it was just a right old, good old-fashioned chuff-up from, <laughs> from from start to the to the 45th second. It was just nonsense, absolute nonsense. We weren't awake, we weren't ready for it. And, and that was that. The other... 89 minutes of the game. Fair enough, the first half wasn't fantastic. But, we, I mean, again, bearing in mind, Middlesbrough are a team at the top of the league. They're at the top of their game. They've been building this team for, what, five, six years now? They're at the point where we're just starting. And for the rest of the game, personally, I think in the first half, we matched them. We managed to keep them at bay for the rest of that first half. Second half, we're lucky that we didn't score. It's weird, isn't it? Because it's um, it's it's slightly hard to judge when you fall behind so early in a game, because obviously the team that's won one nil up can afford to sit back a little bit and and let you kind of come at them a little bit more. If it had been nil nil going into that second half, I think it'd have been a very different forty five minutes of football. But then you know we'll never know because we we you know we went one nil down in the first minute and 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 that's that. Um, but we held our own. I thought there was you know there's some really good performances, particularly second half. I think we looked really good. Um, you know we we look at so much different with Forest area on the pitch, and I know we kind of touched on this earlier on about what 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 a difference he makes. But the way that he connects our defensive play to our forward play is something that no one else can do in in that in that squad. He's he's phenomenal at that. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think we, we could probably uh, consider ourselves to be unlucky not to have got something out of it. At the same time, it didn't feel like you know we were seriously banging on the door, really testing the goalkeeper or anything like that. You know, we didn't have a, a massive amount of, of clear cut chances, and I think that's just comes down to as simple as the fact that Middlesbrough have a good defence and they defended and did what they needed to do, and they won the match. So you know, fair enough to them. Um, it started so badly for us that you know we 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 were up against it from literally the word go. Um, we 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 did ourselves some justice, I think. And any neutral watching that would probably think actually Sheffield Wednesday are a decent team. Um, you know the net result is the same. We come away with zero points, but what it's not going to do is I don't think it's going to hit our confidence as a team. I think they'll have been back in training today, or I don't know if they get you know a little bit of a rest or whatever. Uh, but you know, next time they're on the training field, they can afford to think, yeah, you know, we did we did everything right. We just didn't score on another day. We would have done and would have got something out of it. So you know, that that for me is the important bit: is that the confidence won't be hit, and that we'll we'll now you know we write that game off, and we'll now be thinking about going to Fulham, um, looking at, at, at their defensive issues and how we can exploit them, um, and and hopefully we can bounce straight back, uh, get three points on Saturday, and then. Everyone can forget about all the you know, all the silliness that, that, that came about as a result of last night and team selection and everything like that. My favourite thing about last night, were, and, and you were there to witness it, Vic and, Vic and James, the hyperbole on the internet. Was it not the greatest thing you've ever seen? It, it was they, comedy. It was oh, comedy. It was just... <laughs> it just writes itself, some of these things. I, I've got to give Fudge some credit here, actually, because um, he, he made what was actually quite an entertaining game of football... 20 times better because it was a bit like having a midi podcast on the sofa so whenever there was like a lulling play everyone would turn to fudge and it'd be <laughs> like you know the dan fudge social media corner where he would run through his favorite tweets from the last five minutes it was well, brilliant he was so angry about all those tweets though that's the main thing every so often he'd be like listen to this listen to this right uh, listen listen to this this is what so-and-so says from so-and-so oh god Stop tweeting when Fudge can see you. He gets so mad at it. Oh, but it was brilliant. 
It was it was probably more entertaining than the actual game of football. It was brilliant. I must admit, even I managed to get a little bit wound up with a couple of Wednesday fans on Twitter. And, and, and you and I... went for it, my lord. No, you, I didn't... Were, you went in capitals. I, I, you there was so angry. <laughs> we all sat there like Fudge went, oh, look at my lord's post. And we were all like, oh, no, he's just... mad. The, the, yeah, the, the... Yours was one I actually write, write, read out, Lord H. Yours was one that actually went, oh, yeah. Lord H, he's lost it. He's, He's gone mental. It. He's had too many sherries. <laughs> it's not so much that. It's, uh, 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 people, uh, quite rightly sometimes, do describe me as uh, a, a happy clapper. Um, but I personally think that the, 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 the word supporter uh, means that you support your team no matter what. To be losing 1-0 against the, the league's best team, quite simply, uh, with a, the, undisputably the, um, the best defensive league in... Uh, sorry, the best defensive side in the... Um, the, the t- it's just crazy how people was j- just effing and blinding and jeffing and, and getting on at the team so, so much. And when we're losing 1-0, if we'd been losing 10-0 to Toy Town, I would have absolutely understood the sentiment. I, I wouldn't have agreed with it, but I would have understood it. I could not, for the life of me, wrap my head around what people were getting so incredibly angry about yesterday. Um, it, it completely baffled me. I thought at, at one point that clearly I was getting this wrong. Um, I, 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 I thought I could see what Carlos was doing, setting up for a counter-attack. I understood why he was doing it, because the players had played two days ago and were absolutely knackered. I couldn't fathom why other people couldn't understand that. And it's, Everyone's entitled to opinion, of course they are. But to scream and shout that Carlos has got it wrong because he's not put exactly the same team out that's played two days ago is nonsense, absolute nonsense. And then I get people tweeting me saying, well, Andy Murray manages to do it and cyclists do it and things like this. And I'm, uh, nonsense to, to compare footballers and having the same training as other sportsmen. And you might as well compare them with athletes like sumo wrestlers. It's bumpkum, utter, utter nonsense. And it really, really got on my goat. I had really? To sw- really? I, not, not, I had not, not noticed. <laughs> I had to switch Twitter You're off. You're so yesterday. angry. No, no, it, it, it's just, it, it, it makes me cross when supporters don't support. Let's, and let's take a big deep breath. And as the only place I actually exist is Twitter, to switch it off takes some doing because <laughs> essentially um, Lord Hillsborough stops existing when Twitter gets switched off. Um, and and it, it looks as though Carlos had a, a similar sort of ethic. Uh, Carlos actually got on Twitter and, and started replying to the fans, um, explaining, if you like, uh, his, his selection. Um, of, of course, I'm sure plenty of people have seen this as well. And um, there was a couple of tweets out um, mentioned about the players were fit and, and if the players were fit of course he would play the same side um, there was a, another tweet that Carlos sent about injuries um, Westwood this is a, a Carlos's um, names for the players not mine is Westwood Tom Turner Alex McGugan Hooper Boos Marco Moore Sam and Philip Mello all injured so he couldn't pick them I don't understand why people don't understand this am I being wrong but he did pick Sugo didn't he so for that, he deserves a bit of a slap. But he's, he's not a terrible player. Oh, he was pretty naff last night. But it, it's um, you know, I, th- I think we're all pretty much on the on the same page in this you know uh, audio forum that we are in at the moment, which is that you know it was silly. The 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 meltdown on Twitter was silly, but it happens and it happens every single time. And there's no point in being surprised about it or getting annoyed about it because it's going to happen. You know, it happened umpteen times last season. It'll happen again this season. When, whenever we have a game where we don't score or we lose, you know, Twitter will go into into meltdown. Liam Palmer seemed to get the majority of stick last night, who actually, particularly second half, he wasn't anything like as bad as people were making out. Um, Sugu was the only one that I would have looked at and said he was fairly poor right throughout the game, never really kind of offered us anything beyond that everyone played all right and and that's to me that's all that matters if people want to kick off about it on twitter then you know fine go for it don't matter i'll just ignore you i mean the way we set up it's like how we set up towards the start of the season with a one up front anyway it's just the last couple of games i think we've been spoiled a little bit with two strikers and forestieri in the team as well i mean i, I know you know in, injuries are always going to play a part or fitness or whatever and it's been mentioned to the nth degree over this last 24 hours. But, you know, going back six, seven, eight games, we played with one up front. That's the way we did it. Um, 
and it worked. It it was working. It had worked prior to that. So, you know, what's to say it weren't going to work last night? Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, it's, again, I'm, I'm all calm again now. I apologise for my uh, for my earlier rantage. Uh, I love all Wednesday fans, of course I do. Even the people that are wrong. Uh, I'm joking. Um, so let's put the Middlesbrough game to bed, shall we? Uh, as James said, let's let's pop it behind us and 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 um, we'll just move forward from it. Oh no. Jeeves, we're going to need some more equipment. Then you need to speak to Oddballs, a speciality. What the? Oddballs, a speciality dealing steel, food, and engineering equipment. Where's that voice coming from? We offer great deals on all types of equipment and can include dismantling, delivery, and erection anywhere in the world. Did he just say erection? We can also buy your surplus equipment or sell it on commission. With over 30 years' experience, let us achieve the best deal for you. Where can I find out more of Voice in the Sky? Go to www.bentoria.com You heard him, folks. Jeeves, get a broom. Right then, ladies and gents, so let's uh, crack on with the Wednesday news for this week. Uh, there's not a great deal of it, but it is rather awful. Some of it. Um, quite simply, Pavel Cernicek, unfortunately, has uh, lost his fight after his um, his cardiac arrest. Um, Pavel was placed into a um, uh, an induced coma to try and help his body recover um, from what happened. And uh, again, just shocking that he, he never came out of it. Uh, 47 years old, which is just... No age at all, is it? There's been countless tweets from not just, obviously, Wednesday fans, Newcastle fans, Pompey fans, etc., etc., etc. The amount of players that have, have, have sent out messages, etc., etc., obviously from a, a Wednesday point of view, Kevin Pressman, uh, Nicholas Alexanderson, uh, again, just, just countless. It just goes to show what a, essentially a cracking chap he was. And um, by all accounts, from reading what we've read, um, just an utter, utter professional as well. Yeah, it's, 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 it's really horrible news. And, um, you know, we, we talked about it last week and I think we all kind of um, paid our our own sort of tributes to, to Pavel Cernicek and our memories of Pavel Cernicek um, uh, a, a week ago, and it's um, obviously the football family, if you like, has come together today with 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 with, with this news, and I, I think it's I think it's really taken everyone by a little bit of surprise because you you kind of imagine someone that's forty seven years old and 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 obviously what happened with him having a, a heart attack, and certainly for me. I just kind of assumed in my head it would just be a matter of time and he'd pull through and it'll all be fine. So it really hit me really hard today when, when the, the you know they, they decided that they would um, switch off his 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 life support because it had not really entered my head that 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 was even remotely likely to um, to happen. So mm. you know hor- horrible horrible news. Uh, a really sad day for for football generally. Particularly, obviously, for, for for Sheffield Wednesday and and, and Newcastle as, as kind of the main two clubs that he played for in this country, um, and it goes without saying, you know, thoughts very much with with his family. Yeah, it's it's absolutely horrendous. Like the guy was forty seven. That's it's no age, and like he was so fit and healthy. And like we say this every time, pretty much every time we say someone's ill, we say, oh, but they were so fit and healthy, and it's just. <laughs> You know, it's it's awful. Forty-seven years old. It's no age. I feel so sorry for his whole family. What a shit Christmas and shit New Year. And the only consolation we can say is the whole Wednesday family are behind you. We're all praying for you. We're all thinking about you. You know, God bless. Yeah, here, here. I mean, you know, you've only got to see the you know um, compliments paid by players of his. Wednesday generation as well tonight um, you know right across Twitter they're all you know everybody just can't say enough about the bloke um, and he, he was just one of those honest pros and you knew what you were going to get he weren't spectacular he weren't rubbish he, you know he were, he were like a 7 out of 10 virtually every week um, and it's just shocking it's just shocking and you know I think as everybody's already said I just think everybody's thoughts are with his family and his friends and it's just, it's just horrible. That's seven out of ten now, though. Can you imagine that now? 
We'd be at the top of the league, wouldn't we? If we had his second out of ten an hour, it's just yeah. it's frightening. It's absolutely frightening. And I hope that you know Sheffield this year has lost three bloody good goalkeepers, and it it's a really really sad time for the city. Yeah, there's there's nothing at all that, that we can say that's going to ease anything or, or that's not being said or, or there is no words for this kind of thing. And it's just one of those awful ironies as well. It's, it's come on the uh, the eighth anniversary of, of Phil O'Donnell's passing as well, which again, eight years ago that, that, that O'Donnell went again, just far too early. And it's, it's one of these things where it just reoccurs and reoccurs and it's, it's awful. There's nothing we can say except for... It's just God bless, isn't it, at the end of the day? It's just to all your families, to all your friends, just God bless you all. When my contract, contract runs out, I decided to just move on and then uh, I've been back home for a couple of months and then Sheffield come back to me and uh, with offer. So I was very happy I could come back to Premiership. Um, right then, ladies and gents. So, um, let us crack on with a little bit more Wednesday news. Of course, uh, we spoke about him very briefly just earlier. Um, uh, Nicholas Alice Anderson, um, it was his birthday this week. And again, just to make everybody feel um, rather old, he was 44 this week. 40 chuffing four. Um, either I'm getting very old or these footballers are aging much faster um, than I am. And of course, although it wasn't a, a fantastic, um, wonderful year for the Wednesdays, he was player of the year, uh, 99-2000 as well. Uh, <laughs> hey! <laughs> <laughs> Number one with a bullet. Well, well done, Nicholas Alexanderson. <laughs> You were, you were less <laughs> shit than everybody else that year. <laughs> but of course, uh, I'm sure at the time, if Victoria had been slightly older, uh, I'm sure it'd have been uh, on the list of it, wouldn't it, surely? Well, do you know what? <laughs> I have two instances with Nicholas Alexanderson. Once, I went into <laughs> Tesco and Abbeydale Road, my god sister, Grace, and we're walking around. I was in my full, like, full kit wanker, full kit. Socks, short shirt, everything. Were you like 15? Uh, um, let's hope she no. was 21 or something like that. <laughs> Shut <laughs> up, you pervert. I was about 10, right? So, and I saw him, and I said, hello, Nicholas. He went, hello. And I just kind of walked away. And then the next time, I went with my nan, who was about 70 at the time. And uh, she got a trolley given to her by this lovely bloke. And she went, oh, God, you were nice. He was Swedish. He told me he was called Nicholas. He was beautiful. And I was like, was that Nicholas Alexanderson that just gave you a trolley? She went, I don't know, but he was beautiful. And then, like, a year later, she saw my poster on my wall. She was like, oh, that's him that gave me my trolley. I could have been <laughs> married off. Please, please don't say, was she on your nanan's list? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's on this list. That's who I take after. And of course, it was also uh, Joel Wildsmith's birthday as well, who was uh, 20 um, years old uh, this week. So, uh, again, if he's going to be um, a Wednesday player, hopefully um, well into his uh, late 30s, as goalkeepers tend to do, um, it's only going to get better. Fantastic. 20? He's 20 year old. Yeah. yeah. 20. Yeah. Um, on, on Sunday night, I was drinking hooch in Walkabout in Sheffield. And we actually said at the time, I had had one of these since 1995. So when he was born, it was the first time I was drinking hooch. <laughs> That's quite depressing, isn't it? I've got corns on my feet older than him. <laughs> there is, um, there's no chance that Joe Wildsmith will be as profitable to this football club as Nicholas Alexanderson was, because we must have made millions selling the little letters to go on the back of the shirt for him. <laughs> We must have made a fortune from that. Wildsmith's just not a long enough name. And that, well, that's why no one wants to sign Denver Bar anymore. You, get, you make no money from Bar on the back of your shirt. It's only two letters. Two pound fifty each, that's only a fiver. Alexanderson, 35 quid to have that on the back of your shirt. <laughs> Gosh, straight away, there you are. And Middlesbrough going absolutely nuts then that Constantopoulos now has Dimmy on the back of his shirt. <laughs> Um, right then, ladies and gentlemen, so let's uh, crack on with the preview of the Fulham game Z, um, because we're going to be playing them twice um, very, very uh, soon. Um, of course, uh, Mr. Gray has uh, left. I have been reliably informed. He has now um, sort of left his... Uh, I think it was just sort of keeping the uh, the seat warm, wasn't he, until they found uh, somebody um, uh, a little bit more senior. And they have now got... I'm going to... Uh, Attempt to pronounce his name really, really badly. Anybody want to help me out out there? No, I'm going to let you do it. I'm going to, because my pronunciation arises are 
legendary. Of course, when Zhao first came, he was pronounced Joa. So <laughs> we'll have a go at um, Jonovac. I prefer the Fulham manager to be left as that now forever. <laughs> Let's not correct it. It's called that. I'm not even going to try and repeat. <laughs> Copy and paste. Um, of course, um, we, we've we had some links with Fulham um, over this last season. Uh, Ross McCormack, um, he continues to be linked with the Wednesdays. And to be fair, he's not had a bad season so far. 15 goals so far this season. Uh, Dembele, um, of course, is over there as well. 10 goals this season. It, it's worth saying that they, they know where the goal is. Unfortunately, they're not fantastic at keeping them out, are they? That seems to be the problem. This, this is why they brought in Stuart Gray, isn't it? Because um, I didn't realise, I, I thought he was still there. I thought he was brought in as some weird job title like senior coach, but they were still going to have a head coach above him when they, they brought someone else in. Cause he may well be, oh boy. I, I, I think that the theory was that they were, I, I, I think they've scored the most goals in the championship this season, but they've also conceded the most goals in the championship this season, which means two things. It means, first of all, their fans get bloody good value for money. Um, but it also means that you know they, they would be top of the league if they did not leak goals. And Stuart Gray, whatever Wednesday fans may, um, may, may think of him after last season, um, he has a good record when it comes to his defensive coaching. He's probably the best in this league when it comes to defensive coaching. So he's Absolutely. a good fit for them there for 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 that for that reason. So um, it's a, it's also a weird time to play them, isn't it? Because they're obviously going to be going through a little bit of transition. They do score goals for fun, but they do concede goals for fun. But you would think that now they're going to be tightening that up a little bit. We certainly know where the back of the net is, but you know we didn't score at Borough. Um, we'd got what was it seven in our two games before that. Um, it's could 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 be four all, or could be nil nil, couldn't it? It's one of them. Absolutely. I mean, looking at the uh, the league table in the the league alone, they've, they've scored forty goals, which, as James said, is the the most scored in the league. Uh, they have conceded forty two, uh, which isn't quite the most, but it's not far off. Um, the only people that have scored scored or had more scored against them is Bristol uh, with 43. Um, their record recently has been awful um, up until this evening on the night of recording they've won um, Toy Town which again that's not much of a marker really is it um, but apart from that uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine games they've gone uh, without a win until they face Rotherham this evening. Um, it's going to be an interesting one, this. Hopefully, uh, they're not going to quite have their house in order before um, we rock up there. Well, I think, you know, with our attacking um, players we've got, and hopefully, you know, Forestier has got enough of a rest in him before we go down there to so he can start the game. And, um, you know, we can add to that goals conceded tally, although our record down there isn't great. I mean, last season, well... I think we have to brush over, brush <laughs> the over that. The less said, the better. Yeah, exactly. But you know, they've, they've they've conceded quite a few goals, and you know, we're not we're we're not exactly shot shy. So, you know, I think I think we could have a uh, could have a decent result. Um, you know, and up, upset their apple cart a little bit. I think it'll be banging. I'm, I'm genuinely expecting a proper top end tussle. I don't I don't know why. I just think it's going to be like watching. Watching Newcastle in the 90s, do you know what I mean? When Kevin Keegan was in charge and they just went balls out, go for it. Let's go and spank this team 5-4. You know, like, imagine, like, a game where you've got Darren Ferguson's Peterborough from a couple of years ago fighting off against, you know, <laughs> Kevin Keegan's Newcastle. Just an absolute 7-0 ding-dong. Or, you know what I mean? A, a proper eight-goal thriller. I'd, I'd be... Uh, you know, only because I'm going and I think it might be a right laugh to see that many goals. It could just be one nil. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it is a little bit of a worry, our, our defensive setup at the moment. Of course, um, Hutch went off with a knock. Um, we, we, we all know the story behind Lees. We, we, we do have our own defensive frailties at the moment, don't we? Um, do we think this is going to be a problem? Yeah, when you've, when you've got someone like McCormack there who can, you know, he, he can score goals, can't he? Um, he can score goals for fun. Um, it's, it's going to be a worry, but, you know, until it gets to Saturday, I don't think we're going to really... No, I think that we um, we went there last season. Similar sort of thing, I remember. I think we went into that game on a decent run of form. Uh, and that's off the top of my head. So um, if I'm wrong, I apologise for that. But I think we went there with quite a bit of confidence. Um, and we were 
we're about three nil down by half time. We just didn't really show up for it. So if, if feels a little bit like that it just feels like one of those games that could completely go either way um you know they could they could tear us to bits they really could because the you know from an attacking point of view they are they are really really good they're, they're as good as anyone in the league when it comes to attacking but um we've said this before that you know carlos is not stupid he he sees the opposition that we've got in front of us he will he will pick a team he will brief that team um, in in the correct manner to be able to go and win the game, and I think we've just got to have faith that you know that Carlos will do his bit, his players will do their bit, and we've we, you know we've got a, a really good chance of going there. And I don't think it's about getting a result. I think it's about us going there and winning. I think you're bang on. I, it, it, I think Fudge has got it right there. It's just going to be a, a sort of a a, a nads out affair, shall we say? And just uh, it's going to be just two heavyweights um, throwing punches and and seeing basically who lands the most. Um, as simple as that. Uh, Saturday is also uh, quite. An exciting day for the Wednesday week podcast as well, because uh, myself, Mr. Fudge, Mr. Eddie, we're all heading down to London um, quite early doors on Saturday, and we are quite excited because we're off to the studios of Sky Sports, uh, where we're going to be uh, meeting up with a friend of the podcast, David Garrido. We're going to have a look round. Uh, we'll hopefully see a bit of um, Soccer AM being broadcast as well. Um, so that's quite good. And then we're off through to Hammersmith, where we're going to be meeting up with some other Wednesday fans. Uh, lots of beer, lots of jovial pre-match stuff, and then off to the game. Um, now, hopefully, we're going to be videoing and, I believe the phrase is, vlogging as much of all this Ooh. as possible. Whether or not we're allowed to uh, video inside Sky Sports, I'm not sure yet, but we'll certainly be doing lots of videoing outside Sky Sports, like excited school children waiting to go into a concert. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, hopefully we should have some really good um, footage. All I would say is just, you know, bear in mind the fact that after doing all this, we are off to the pub, we are going to be drinking quite a lot. Me and Fudge are staying down in London, so we'll continue to drink quite a lot after the match so it may not be until possibly Sunday or Monday before we actually get around to kind of editing the footage and actually getting it online but it will be worth the wait we promise you that much are you going to have your muff out, James? I will have my muff out throughout. <laughs> Johnny, good news. So if you do see um, a strange man waving his muff around in the centre of London, I know it's nothing new down there, but do give him a tap on the shoulder and uh, have a drunken interview as well. I'm sure James would love a tap on the shoulder from you. The Wednesday Week is proud to be associated with Cavendish Cancer Care. Cavendish is a Sheffield charity dedicated to improving the quality of life for people living with cancer. No one should face cancer alone, so Cavendish provides emotional support through counselling and complementary therapies. The services they provide are free of charge and are funded through donations. If you can help or would like to find out more information, you can go to www.cavcare.org.uk That's C-A-V C A R E dot org dot UK. Um, right then, ladies and gentlemen. Unfortunately, uh, after all the James's muff talk, uh, we seem to have lost the podcast slightly. Um, we've had a bit of a corrupted file, so I'm just going to finish the show off all on my little lonesome. Uh, you're stuck with me, I'm afraid. Uh, just before we do do that, we have had a note from Andrew Every over there from the uh, the Aussie Owls, the Australian Owls, who is trying to gather as many Australian Owls as he can in Melbourne on the 16th of January for the Leeds game so please if you're out there in Oz and you'd like to attend the match uh, with um, a, a lot of the, the Australian brethren out there um, you can do that and you go over there to uh, to Facebook there's a, a Facebook event set up or of course you can contact Andrew himself over there on Twitter and um, the notice sent me <laughs> with his, uh, um, his Twitter handle the cheeky little monkey is uh, at um, a K R every that's A K R every um, over there on Twitter as well. So please do um, get in touch and and join in. Looks like it's going to be a cracking time had by all. Um, of course, we'd like to thank all the chaps and chapettes that's been on the podcast this evening. You can get all the James over there on Twitter at James Marriott, uh, Victoria at Victoria one eight six seven, Dan Fudge at Dan Fudge, and a massive thank you, of course, to uh, to Terry for joining us from uh, um, over there on Owls on. 
online. Uh, absolute pleasure to have you on. And of course, you can get all the Terry not just at Owls Online and at OwlsOnline.com, but so you get all of his personal Twitter handle as well over there at Hoyland Owl as well. Oh, of course, if you'd like to get all of me over there on the Twitter, you can do that at Lord H. That's L zero R D underscore H. You can get all of the podcast at T W W Cast. You can send us an email. You can get us on Facebook. You can like us over there on YouTube. And of course, please do subscribe to the iTunes as well. Ladies and gents, it has been an absolute pleasure speaking with you this evening. Thank you very much for all your time. Um, Be good, be safe, and do have a cracking new year. actually going to ask if your nan was wearing a full kit no No. i'll tell you what this is weird and i don't know if this is a sign of age like you were talking about lord ilch uh lord ilch (laughs) lord ilch (laughs) 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 no i go oh this is turning to like a panto ad lib no no it wasn't lord ilch there you are Hang on. Oh, Hang on. you'll get your 14th booking of the season for that. <laughs> Budge. Hang on. Have a minute. It's weird you were saying that, Lord Il- Ilsbrough. Il- I didn't. Hang <laughs> Come on! Lord Ilsbrough. That's not even a thing. Lord Ilsbrough. Lord Ilsbrough. Lord Ilsbrough. It's weird you were saying that about getting old, actually, Lord Ilsbrough. The. Um, the ha! <laughs> I'm grinning. <laughs> oh, I would, to be fair. It, you know what? It's a shit gag. It, you know, I built it up now, and it's a shit gag. All, to, I, all I was going to gonna say is, did your nan give him his pound for his trolley? And that, that was all it was going to be. Oh, and and I was going to say, is it a sign of getting older? I'm worried about whether your nan gave him his quid. Do you know what? Just move on. It, it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Russian. Um, right. Um... <clears throat> No, I was going to say, I've just found a cat shit that I don't know how many days old it is on my living room floor. I'm just going to wipe it up. Give me two seconds. Wow. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> a big pile of shit. Just, <laughs> honestly, when you're talking away, I just, you know, I, I, thought, I thought, well, I'll put the washing away, get something done, like. And what I've done is shat under where all my clothes have been drying. And then, oh and then just pulled God. a pair of kegs off of, off of the rack. Oh, God, I'm and crying. And buried himself under that. I, I wonder why he was lying on the table, the moggy little sod. <laughs> <laughs> Just a pile of shit in my living room. Are right, you glad you came on, Teddy? Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh,